started. First, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Christina Itarak, and I am a project specialist with Care Optimize. Um, today, we're going to go ahead and do a presentation on what we currently know about MIPS and um, why we should all be paying attention since uh, this will be starting soon. Um, I do want to make the statement again that we have muted everybody's lines um, and we will open up for questions at the end of the presentation. Um, however, if you want to use the chat box in the meantime to ask any questions, please feel free to do so. We'll be monitoring that as well. So our agenda for today um, for this MIPS presentation is to go over, number one, what the incentive program is, what is actually MIPS, what is the new clinical practice improvement portion of MIPS? How are the scores calculated? When will this all begin? What payment structure would we expect? And are there any exclusions to MIPS in participating with the program? So what MIPS is, is the Merit-Based Incentive Program. And it was initiated after the MACRA Act of 2015. So what this program is going to do is it will strengthen Medicare access by improving physician payments and replace the sustainable growth rate program uh, with a value-based payment system. So we're familiar with a lot of the portions uh, that MIPS has, we're used to the meaningful use area, we're used to the physician quality reporting system or PQRS measures, we're used to the value-based modifier program. However, there's a new area with MIPS that is called the CPI or clinical practice improvement. So what MIPS does is it consolidates all of these programs and continues the performance measurements and reporting mechanisms that we are used to using today, um, consolidating all these into one area. So CPI is broken down into four different areas. We have patient safety, population management, care coordination, and then the patient engagement. So all of these are part of that clinical practice improvement area that has been added on into the MIPS program. So there are some basic components of the clinical practice improvement. So you can see that what they're trying to do is make sure that there's expanded practice access, so same-day appointments for urgent needs, after hours clinical advice and access. They're looking at our population manage management, so monitoring health conditions um, of our populations and providing timely interventions. They're looking at our care coordination, so communication of test results, um, exchange of clinical information to patients and other providers. Uh, use, and then also the possible use of remote monitoring or telehealth. Uh, that would be something newer that's becoming more relevant as time goes on. The patient or beneficiary engagement is like where we give the care plans um, to individuals with complex needs, and then the self-management assessments and training and then making sure our patients are engaged and making decisions along with the provider and the healthcare team uh, to actually make their healthcare um, more intuitive. So it's more about a team approach where the patient is actually uh, involved in their own healthcare. We're also looking at the patient safety and praxis assessments. So use of clinical or surgical checklists, practice assessments, certifications. 
and then the participation in an alternative payment model. So those are basic components of CPI, and that's a little bit newer. Some of them we're kind of used to, but then there's other areas that they're expanding on um, as well with this new MIPS program. So for MIPS, how they calculate your scores will definitely impact the reimbursement that the physicians will receive. They annually will start measuring providers based in four categories, and what that will do is creates a score from zero to 100. So the categories are the value-based modifier or quality. You can get up to 30 points for that. The VBM measured resource use, 30 points for that. Your meaningful use can gather 25 points. And then this new clinical practice improvement portion uh, expands on and is relative for 15 points. And all these scores will be shared on the physician compare site. Um, so they will be shared publicly. So the performance year begins in 2017. So that's the year CMS will start to begin collecting data on the four different areas. Quality for 50%, so we're used to that. The PQRS measures, the meaningful use, uh, qualified data registries. The next area would be the resource use. So VBM and episodes of care for 10%. Meaningful use of a certified EHR, 25%. And then the CPI improvements, 15%. The payments will begin in 2019. So from 2017 to 2019, they're gonna start gathering all that data. And then you can see that the score will be applied to provider payments beginning in 2019. And you can see that it will increase or decrease based on the score that you get. So in 2019, you'll get a plus or minus 4%. 2020, a plus or minus 5%. 2021, a plus or minus 7%. And 2022, at a plus or minus 9%. So the payment is based on performance. You can see the uh, performance threshold, the set of each performance year, 2017 to 2019, um, and what they do is apply that to a physician's Medicare payment. The plus or nine percent incentive or penalty, that's the maximum base payment adjustment. The base payments rates are gone and they're replaced with automatic increases for all physicians from 2015 to 2019. And then for six years after that, there is no automatic payment increases and the physician's rates are altered based on their performance now. So you can see that MIPS is budget neut neutral and that for every physician who makes more from MIPS, there will be one physician that might make less. It depends on all your quality and how they're doing. So your top performers can actually get substantial financial rewards, while others who don't perform can end up paying significant penalties. For the initial two payment years of 2019 and 2020, the performance threshold, threshold will not be based on historical MIPS, but with a combination of performance measures and activities related to your PQRS, meaningful use, and value-based modifier programs. Other potential factors uh, have not yet been determined by CV CMS, but uh, they're still um, giving us more information. So 85% of our MIPS scores 
rely on the performance measurements of PQRS, meaningful use, and value-based modifier. So the best thing that you can do now is to continue to improve in these programs before MIPS begins in 2017. A couple exemptions um, will apply to the MIPS program. So those exceptions include providers in rural areas, certain specialties, and then providers participating in the advanced payment models. So um, APMs consist mostly of accountable care organizations, medical homes, bundled payment models. So if you're participating in those now, uh, there'll be more information to come on an exemption or what exemptions may be um, applicable to the MIPS program. So as MIPS um, information is released from CMS, we will definitely continue to update and share the information with you. Um, we are always available for contact. Uh, you can uh, contact myself or my colleague Kyle, and we'll be happy to get more information to you as we receive it. And we'll actually be doing more of these webinars as they release more information. And there are also additional resources that um, you can find information on regarding the MIPS program, and we're sharing those here. All the attendees on the call will also get a copy of the presentation sent to you as well. So you can refer back to that also. And then just so you guys know, Care Optimize, we are always here to help you, not just in this area, but in many of the areas that you may need help with in your practices. So um, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone for any kind of questions or anything that you guys might have. If I currently don't have the answer to the question, we'll definitely investigate and uh, get your email information and email you back or email the group of attendees so that we can get that information out to everybody. Uh, Christina, yeah, Dan, we we actually have a couple of um, we have two or three questions that people have um, written in the chat space. Okay, perfect. Uh, the first one is that first one is uh, what should I be doing now to, to to prepare for MIPS? The most important thing that I would say you would need to do now is to make sure that you're not just meeting your PQRS measures, but you're actually monitoring and doing well in the measures. Um, and if you're not, or you're not sure where you stand on those measures, uh, you can always contact us and we can um, set up a call to discuss those and how you can monitor and begin that process. But I would say that's the most important thing to really make sure you're not just meeting, but you're really monitoring them as a practice. Okay, and question number two. We have a few EPs who must attest for Medicaid in their state. If they treat a Medicare patient, will they be docked the Medicare percentage penalty? Um, I haven't read any information specifically um, on Medicaid um, with the percentages, but I will definitely uh, take that question and get an answer for you. Jan, do you have that information so that we can send that out? Um, they haven't released anything specific to Medicaid that I've seen. Yeah, Brian, if you'll give me your email address in the chat room, then I will uh, we'll get that to you. And, and then one more. Um, the incentive or penalty percentage, is it all or none? Meaning, should the providers meet all of the threshold, or will it be calculated and the incentive penalties will be made accordingly? That's correct. That last portion is correct. So um, what they'll do is calculate your score, and then they're going to base whatever that score is, wherever you stand from 0 to 100. That's how they're going to base what you receive or don't receive. OK, 
Okay, that's all in the chat. If anybody has another question they'd like to ask, the, um, everybody has been unmuted. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, in one of your slides, you said that the MIPS program was revenue neutral, um, and yet that's sort of different than what I understood. So I understood there was going to be a threshold, and if you were above the threshold, you got a bonus, and if you were below it, you got a penalty, which implies if somehow every doc in the program were above the penalty, everybody would get or above the threshold, everybody would get um, a, a bonus of some sort. So I'm wondering what you meant by revenue neutral. Are they going to distribute this after all of the data comes in? I'm not yeah, sure I from what that. I've read, that's what I've gathered is that they are going to um, distribute after they gather the data and then make that decision based on what you've actually um, completed or done within that time period. Okay. All right, thanks. Any other questions from anybody else? Well, I appreciate all of you attending today. And uh, like I said, as more information becomes available, we will definitely uh, get that information out to you um, as soon as we can. We'll do more of these. And thanks, everybody, for joining.